Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Saturday morning here, Australia, and wow, have a look at the market. It is pumping. Bitcoin, 8%, nearly at all time highs, $62,000. Look at the volume. I mean, it's jumped up crazy, nearly 30% in volume in 24 hours and it's all on the news that you know maybe a bitcoin etf is coming and you know some at least somewhat positive regulation and all the rest of it and the market is just on fire i mean have a look at it now we need to remember that this could be the start of something really good but it could also be that you know the weekend is now upon us and we're going to have a bit of a correction don't get me wrong i don't think we're going to drop 50 percent or anything but you know, if you're looking to put some money in and not financial advice, just my personal opinion, maybe just hold over the weekend and see what happens. There's probably going to be a retracement and a better point to get in. But again, you need to do you uh, and I'm going to do what I do and I'm waiting for better points or at least having a look for some coins that I'm in that I like and if they're down. But at the moment, I mean, everything seems to be pumping. 2.52 trillion up 4% Bitcoin dominance. I mean, jumped a whole lot 46%. I think this could probably rise into the 50s, particularly if Bitcoin gets on a run and starts pushing, you know, $70,000. Uh, well, really, anything over $64,000, $65,000, I think you're going to see plenty of money go into Bitcoin. People will still be chasing the altcoins, uh, but Bitcoin, I think, is really going to suck a lot of the volume up. And we can see it has already. Oh, gas prices, not the greatest, but look, you know, $9.44, it is what it is. All right, what's performed the best in the last 24 hours? Because Bitcoin's definitely up there. We can see it dropped a tiny bit just then. And again, I'd expect that over the weekend sometime, there's probably going to be a, little, be a little bit of a retracement. And that's when I'd be looking to uh, buy, uh, you know, my sort of fortnightly DCA uh, as I do. Because I've got money sitting on the side, just not jumping in quite yet. All right. So best performer in the last 24 hours. Oh, Polygon Matic. I looked at this and I was telling you about it just the other day. The chart pattern was looking like it had just completely flattened out and things were getting ready to move and boom, have a look at that. I'm not saying I did that. I'm not trying to uh, big note and say I had anything to do with that whatsoever, but it was just the chart pattern. It looked too good. It's such a great project. You know, took over Hermes with the roll-ups you know, just all the layer two stuff going on, you know, they're looking to be cross-chain compatible. Yeah, lots of great things happening with Matic and now the price is starting to show. Again, if you're looking to get in Matic, just hold. I reckon there'll be a correction at some stage in the next few days and you'll be able to get in at a slightly better price. Ren BTC, I mean, all the BTCs, obviously, they're starting to move simply because they are connected to Bitcoin. The graph with a nice move. Again, Bitcoin right up there. Solana finally making a bit of a move, which is nice. Polkadot continuing to go with news of the parachains, Litecoin, I mean, look, just gains almost across the board. So things are really nice. And now we need to ask yourself, is this the start of, you know, some big parabolic move? And, you know, again, we'll have a look at the chart shortly. We've kind of been in a bit of a parabolic move for a while. All right. What hasn't performed so well then? Is there anything in the top 100 that hasn't performed so well? There's always going to be an outlier or two. Well, there we go. Olympus. Oh, 20% down. So that hurts a bit. Flow down, stacks down. Again, you look at these coins that are down, they were all pumping in the last few days. So, you know, this isn't that they're overly down. Olympus really is. But again, I think they had a pretty big pump earlier on. This is just things correcting. You know, they were probably up 10, 15, 20% over, you know, a few days. And now they're just simply having a little bit of a cool down. Again, the traders getting in and taking some profits and things like that. And maybe even some of the long-term holders because these coins have now hit a certain price mark that people think they want to take some profits. So, yeah, 4.5% up, all those great gains. And look, really only one loss that would kind of really hurt. Don't get me wrong, losses hurt in general. But then all the rest, I mean, they're just single digit losses. And that's after they've been pumping in the day's price. So nothing too bad. All right, the Bitcoin chart is what I want to have a look at. Whew, look at that. It just rocketed. We had an indecision candle there. And bam, I mean, what is that? Let's have a look. What kind of move is this? This is a 7% move. And that's just the candle body. That's not even including the wick. So very, very nice. 
Now, again, we have to wait and see. Oh, so close to, you know, new all-time highs. So, yeah, things are looking great. What else can I say? But, again, this is what we've been doing for a while. I wouldn't be surprised if we get up to here and we probably have a bit of a harsh rejection. Not saying it's what's going to happen, but this is, you know, we haven't had too much kind of pullback. I mean, this was just a, a random kind of flash uh you know candle but you can hardly even call a candle it's got almost no body so i'm not going to be surprised if we get up here and then again maybe have to come back down you know and retest kind of 57,000 maybe even come back to 55,000 so again if you're looking for good entry points at the moment considering things are pumping just wait and see what happens again i've got to say this over and over that's not financial advice that's just my personal opinion because that's what i'm doing i think bitcoin will probably get up around about here look it might even go over a bit and then we're going to have uh, a bit of a pullback. So again, maybe you can get some Bitcoin at 58,000 as opposed to the 61, nearly 62,000 we're at now. That's what I'm doing uh, for the weekend. Look, waiting for a correction for me to then go and uh, jump in. Or I'll probably play some buy orders anyway. Uh, and yeah, rather than do it uh, sort of manually waiting for the dip, that's probably going to be the better play. But look, things are looking quite nice. So oh, we've got to put this back on. That's what's, uh, it was out a little bit. I was like, I'm pretty sure we're back in. And yes, we are back in this long-term upwards trending channel that started in March last year in the crash of everything. All right, a couple of interesting stories I want to have a look at. So Australian pension fund with 69 billion in assets under management is eyeing a crypto investment. So this is the Queensland Investment Corporation and they are Australia's fifth largest funds manager. Now there's a reason that super funds, that's what, uh, like IRAs and things like that over in the States, that's we call them superannuation here. There's a reason they haven't got in yet. And Australia's so-called super funds that manage the retirement savings of millions of people have been skeptical about the crypto uh, industry uh, and investing in it. Now the skepticism has come about because crypto assets uh, on the part of the supers is a result of uncertainty about how governments globally will intervene in the rapidly growing industry. And what we need to remember is that's what's held back a lot of business. The really big money is not going to come into this space until there is regulation. That is the scary part. The money that we have now, that's not the big money. The big money is yet to come and it's not going to come in one big, you know, kind of foul swoop. It's not like they go, all right, here's the regulation. Boom, everyone's suddenly into cryptocurrency. It will slowly build because while, you know, America may come out with uh, regulation tomorrow, Australia still doesn't have it. So we may take another six months and the UK may take another 12 months after that. And so it's going to be sort of gradual, gradual. But once one country and a big country, again, something like America... Europe, you know, Australia's getting up there. We're not exactly a big country, but we're in the G20. Look, they come out with some, you know, regulation. Other countries will start to follow suit. Quite often they use regulation from other countries to help form their new regulation, if not just completely copy and adopt it. So things are looking good, but again, this is why the big money's still not here. So if you think, you know, your cryptocurrency is doing well now, if it's a good project and it's going to be around in, you know, five or 10 years time, and we do get regulation that again, doesn't crush the industry and just really, you know, make a mess of it, hold your, hold your, hold your pants because they're about to get blown right off when things really start to take off. And like I said, I'm not even talking in the next couple of months. I'm talking in the next 10 years. You know, it really doesn't matter what coin you're in. If it's a good one and it's around in 10 years time, the price that it's worth now is probably going to be so minuscule in comparison to what it's going to be in 10 years time. It'd be like buying Bitcoin at, you know, five or six dollars right now in 10 years time. And again, personal opinion, not financial advice, but again, like buying Amazon or Apple or something, you know, for a couple of dollars and then comparing them to where they are now. The big money is not here yet. The big money is still yet to come. And that's why I'm super bullish on this space uh, and have put you know my money where my mouth is and have a substantial amount of my wealth in cryptocurrencies. All right, Bitfinex and Tether, they've actually been fined. So it's a total of $42.5 million between the both of them, but a majority of it has gone to Tether. So Tether were ordered to pay a fine worth $41 million. So that's a bit of money. Now Tether will be able to pay it. It's not going to crush them, but it is going to hurt. 
And the reason they were made to pay that fine is for misleading statements and omissions of material fact in connection with the US dollar token, USDT. So basically, they this is uh, the word, is that they lied about just how much dollars they had to back up the the, to the USDT. So that's where they've, why they've been fined 42 million. And Bitfinex have been fined 1.5 million in a civil monetary penalty for engaging in illegal off exchange retail commodity transactions with US citizens via their exchange. So, look, for Bitfinex, that's hardly anything. They'll be just fine. For Tether, that's going to hurt a little bit. But look, they've got plenty of money. And it is good that Tether is now starting to get regulated and they're starting to be transparent. You know, they're losing a lot of market share to things like USDT. And it's not to say that Tether's now, you know, 100% legit and, you know, won't get in any further trouble. But at least they're making the effort to get legit because, you know, there's a lot of money in the stablecoin space. And, you know, regulation could still come and really make, again, a mess of things in the both the crypto space and the uh, stablecoin space. But, you know, maybe and hopefully the regulation won't be too bad and, again, won't crush, you know, I don't think the crypto space is going to be crushed so much. That's going to be hard because a lot of stuff is decentralized. But definitely the stablecoin space could be crushed by regulation. But as long as, you know, the companies, you know, the projects behind, you know, like Tether and that, if they maybe weren't doing the right thing before, they pay their fine, but now get in line and continue to do the right thing, then maybe they'll be able to last because there is lots of money in, you know, making a stablecoin available for the public. There's not a lot of money, you know, in just holding it unless you're, again, getting some rewards. And even that is something that regulators might sort of crack down on. So we need to wait and see exactly what happens there. But some fines handed out. Uh, again, the one to Tether would hurt a little bit. 41 million is not cheap, but the one to Bitfinex, I mean, I'm sure they've probably got that in change. All right. This is why I'm in crypto. BTC outperformed every major asset class and altcoins are starting to decouple. Now, what we need to remember is Bitcoin has outperformed every other major asset class out there, like well outperformed them, stocks, bonds, you know, real estate, you name it, absolutely killed them. And altcoins are outperforming Bitcoin. Now, please don't get that wrong and mean that means we forget about Bitcoin because it's not doing that well and just go jump into altcoins. Again, not financial advice, just personal opinion. I want to have a minimum of 30% of my assets in Bitcoin because it's still got plenty of upside. You can still make plenty of money, but you don't have the downsides of the altcoin. So if Bitcoin drops by 50%, and it can still do that, it did it a while ago, altcoins go down by 70, 80, 90%. So the gains are exponentially better in Bitcoin, but the losses are exponentially worse in altcoins. So again, it's about having a balanced portfolio. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, for me, I really do try. You know, I'm heavily invested in crypto, but I have what I like to consider a balanced crypto portfolio. You know, Ethereum is my, it's what I have the most of, but it's because it's done so much better. Uh, it's outperformed Bitcoin. I originally had nearly 50% in Bitcoin and only about 25% uh, in Ethereum and then 25% in uh, other altcoins. It's now sort of around about 30% in, 33% in Bitcoin. Oh God, uh, about nearly sort of 40% in Ethereum uh, and then the rest is made up of altcoins. But this is why I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen because it is just the, you know, the apex predator, as Michael Saylor says. And Bitcoin is part of that apex predator, but it's crypto that is the real apex predator. There's so many good projects out there. Uh, you know, you can get in at very cheap prices and a tiny percent of the world is in crypto. Literally, you'd be lucky if 5% of the world is in crypto. You've got 95% to go. And that doesn't mean that, you know, there's, you know, 100% upside to crypto. No, it's multiples of that. But again, it's all about being in the good projects. Uh, you know, there's 10,000 plus different cryptos out there. You might have 100 or 200 ones that are really good. And then like any other market, you're probably going to have 5, 10 or 20 maybe that do really, really well. And the others, you know, 
they make money but they don't do as best as good as the best ones so that's why you really want to bet um, and I don't like the word bet but you got to make sure yeah you've invested in the right space last but not least Coinbase wants coders to help with its crypto regulation proposal. I love what Brian Armstrong is doing here. He really is a smart dude, and I hope, you know, he can. I hope that the big powers actually listen to him. Whether they adopt everything that he says, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But he is, he's, I would say he's a brilliant mind. Is he the smartest mind? I don't know about that, but definitely a brilliant mind. So what Coinbase have done is that a GitHub repository went live on Thursday in a bid to make open source a proposed framework to the US officials. So he's getting out there to GitHub decoders and he's telling the governments, look, these are the people that really understand it and they're probably the people that you want to come in and help make some regulation. He has He's come out and said that he believes we need a completely new regulatory body to regulate crypto. We don't need the CFTC to do it. We don't need the SEC to do it because they have their own space. And trying to fit crypto into that, it's like trying to fit a square into a circle. It just doesn't work. They're two completely different things. Similar as in, yeah, they're both shapes, but they just don't fit inside each other. And I really love what he's doing here. So he said, this framework represents our good faith suggestions on a US regulatory framework for digital assets. We encourage your contributions to this discussion about the role of digital, digital assets in our shared economic future. I love this. I really hope you know US regulators, and not even just US regulators, regulators around the world come and look at this. There's no point in trying to get people who don't really understand crypto, and there's not that many people that do. Again, you'd be lucky if there's 5% of the population that are actually invested in crypto. Why would you get people who don't understand it to come and regulate it? They just, they would ruin it. Again, trying to fit something new inside old rules. That doesn't work. You need new rules for new things that can still be loosely based around old principles, but not the rules themselves. All right, that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Look, the weekend is looking fantastic. I mean, again, we can go back to this. Things are looking quite nice. Bitcoin was up at 62, so it's dropped down a little bit. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets up to around sort of 64,000 sometime over the weekend, and then we have a bit of a correction, and that might be a good time to buy. No guarantees. This could be, the, excuse me, the start of some big crazy run, but that doesn't mean just ape into things. That's where you're going to come undone. You know, layer into layer into projects, layer out of projects. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Everybody should be on that gain train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.